Hello there. Before we get started on today's episode, I'd like to ask a short favor. If you're interested in either of the two books that I have written and I'm about to release, head on over to my website at theanxioustruth.com slash books. There you can learn about both books, one of which is free, and you can get on my mailing list to be notified when each book is released and how you can get it. I would really appreciate that. Okay, let's get rolling. Hey, what's up, dudes and dudettes? Drew here. Welcome to The Anxious Truth. This is episode 93 of the podcast. 93. That's crazy. Like, we're only seven away from 100. See that? I'm really good at math. Anyway, let's uh, <laughs> get off track here. Today, we're going to talk about dizziness. Like, about a zillion people have asked me to talk about dizziness and being dizzy and the anxiety sensation of dizziness. So we'll, we'll do this one. Now, it's going to be short. And I'll tell you why it's going to be short. I'll, I'll drag you right to the end real quickly. Here's a sneak preview of like the whole episode in 30 seconds. Dizziness is no different than every other anxiety symptom. And the approach is going to be exactly the same. So if you've been waiting for this one and you're hoping that I'm going to give you some sort of special way to deal with dizziness because it's somehow special and different, you're going to be a little bit disappointed. You're going to hear the same thing that I've said about every other anxiety symptom. But it's worth talking about. It's good. It's valuable to people. We're going to talk about it. So let's get into it. Um, dizziness. The first thing I want to do is I want to stop using the word dizziness. So let's let's redefine this. Dizzy. I want you to think of dizzy as as what happens when you have like vertigo. So if you've ever had like vertigo or you've had an inner ear infection, you've had that situation where when you open your eyes in the morning, the room is literally spinning, literally like you are nauseous, you cannot stand upright without falling into the wall or winding up flat on your face or on your rear end. That's dizzy. That's dizzy. So let's let's start to change what we say here. Like the the feeling that people are describing and trust me, this is a sensation that I am intimately familiar with. Even to this day, if I'm going to feel an anxiety symptom of some kind, it's going to be this one. This is the one it's going to be. So I am well, well, well versed and intimately familiar with exactly what it is you are experiencing here. You are not experiencing what we would really call dizziness. Like if you read the Claire Weeks books, she calls it giddiness, which is kind of an old word, or maybe it's a British thing, I don't know. But she calls it giddiness, the feeling of being giddy. Um, really, what we're talking about is the feeling of being unsteady, maybe unsteady, maybe it feels like your eyes and your brain aren't working together. It's kind of tough when you stand up when you turn your head, you're just feeling unsteady. And I'll go through all the feels like it feels like you're going to fall over. It feels like you have to hang on to something. It feels like you can't move your head without causing all kinds of problems. It feels like feels like feels like. But in the end, what you've got going on here is you, is, a, is a sensation of being unsteady. That's really what it is visually and physically unsteady. But here's the deal. That's not truly dizzy, so we're going to start calling it unsteady instead of dizzy because I want to make that distinction between what is truly a physical impair impairment. Like dizzy is a true physical impairment. You are unable to, to stand upright because you have an ear problem or a balance problem or you're sick in some way. That's dizzy. This anxiety symptom, which is really a feeling of unsteadiness, is just a, an uncomfortable thing. So the first step to dealing with your dizziness, quote unquote, dizziness, unsteadiness, is understanding that it is not a physical, it is not a physical impairment. It is just the state of being uncomfortable when you are standing, walking, driving, moving through space. So it's uncomfortable. And then you get afraid of that uncomfortable feeling. So you're the first, very first thing you have to do to deal with dizziness is to absolutely accept that, oh, I'm not actually truly dizzy to the point where I cannot function. I'm just feeling really uncomfortable, visually and, and, and physically uncomfortable as I move through space. And then I get afraid of that. So you're gonna have to redefine what it is you are experiencing. That's what you're experiencing. You're not experiencing true disabling dizziness. You're just experiencing discomfort and unsteadiness. And then you're getting afraid of that. So that's all that is, all right? So you got to start changing the way you frame it. This is not some sort of impairment. And you're going to have to accept that like, well, I'm uncomfortable, which makes me afraid. So therefore, I retreat from those sensations. So you, you have to stop saying that 
I can't do things because I'm dizzy. What you really have to start saying is, I choose not to do things because I don't want to feel that uncomfortable, scary feeling of being unsteady. All right, so I'm not going to go into the mechanics of balance because I'm not here. This is not about reassurance seeking. But, you know, when you have that feeling, what a lot of people will do is, you know, in the beginning, you want to really get your brain around this. When you stand up and you have that unsteady feeling, maybe like your, your eyes aren't keeping up with the rest of your brain, or, you know, you have the sensation that you might fall over, you have to hang on to something. Some people, the, the, people do one of two things. Some people will look directly up at the sky, like hold your hands out, you know, hold your arms out on either side of you, parallel to the ground, pick your chin up and look at the sky. Like, you might get a little unsteady because a lot of people do if you just don't have good balance. But do you wind up literally on the ground? Do you wind up on your rear end? Odds are you do not. And the other thing that some people will do to test it is when you get the feeling, stand on one foot. It's amazing how when you stand on one foot, even though you will swear to anybody that will listen, that you are in a debilitatingly dizzy state. Amazing when you stand on one foot, like your natural instincts and, and your body kicks in and, and your muscles start to adjust and your brain adjusts and it keeps you standing on one foot. Maybe you're not an expert at standing on one foot. I'm not saying you're a flamingo, but many people to, to get their brain around the concept of that they're not actually physically impaired, we'll try those two experiments. Try them if you want. Don't make a habit of them, right? So every time you feel that way, you don't have to prove that you're okay because then that could be, become a crutch in a way. But if it helps in the beginning, knock yourself out. Go ahead and do one of those two experiments. Look up at the sky, hold your arms straight out, look straight up. If you do not wind up on your rear end, then you're fine. Or stand on one foot. If you're able to stand up on one foot and you do not just immediately crumble to the ground, you're fine. All right, so if you want to try that a little bit, that, that's fine. Just don't, like I said, don't make it a habit. But then you have to accept like, oh, yeah, okay, this is not, I'm not truly incapacitated here. I'm just feeling unsteady, which is uncomfortable, which is therefore scary. And I'm making decisions based on being scared and not wanting to be scared. So that's, that's what this is, just like every other symptom. Now, dizzy is often, while it could be for some people, they feel it's their most debilitating symptom because it's really uncomfortable and hard to function that way. I understand that. It's also one of the symptoms that's probably fastest for many people to deal with. And the reason why is many people do not associate that unsteady feeling with anything life-threatening. So anxiety symptoms that have to do with either it feels like your heart is involved or you're breathing, you know, we, we attach those to life-threatening situations, whereas the unsteady dizzy thing is not normally, for most people, not normally looked at as like urgent and life-threatening, just difficult to deal with. So there's a little bit less fear that comes with the dizzy. I think, which is good. It means it's easier to start to approach it the right way and do the right things. It's a little bit easier to do dizzy than it is any others because it just doesn't feel as dangerous, if you will. Uh, or people who have, you know, the fear that they're going to go insane or go crazy or their mind is going to break or something like that. Dizzy isn't associated with any of those things. It's just, it's just uncomfortable and difficult. So know what it is. Start to reframe how you think about it and talk about it. And then once we do that, now what do we do? What's, what's the second step here? I think you're going to know what the second step is. The second step is stop retreating from it. So when you feel it, your reaction to it has to change. Right now, my guess is if you're listening to this and you're hoping to find some sort of magic cure for the anxiety dizziness, you are probably avoiding it. You're probably retreating from it. When you feel it, you back up, you sit down, you lay down, you cancel your day, you don't go to work, you don't go to school, you cancel your dinner plans, whatever it is, because I can't, I'm feeling dizzy, but you got to start to change that. So here's the deal. This is going to sound like a broken record. When you have that sensation, you, you know what I'm going to say to you. I'm going to say you have to work on relaxing instead of tensing, relax your body instead of tensing and bracing and fighting, slow everything down, including your breath. And this is especially important. The breathing becomes a little bit extra point, uh, important in, the, in, this, in this symptom, when in relation to this symptom. Because if you are over-breathing, right? So if you're doing the thing where you're trying to calm yourself down with a deep breath, what usually is this. If you're doing that, hear the big, the big fast puff exhale, because you think that will calm it. Huge, fill my chest with air. And then if you're doing that, and you're doing it rapidly because you are afraid, you're going to start to overbreathe. Like just doing it those three or four times, I have a little slight lightheaded thing. It's over already. But 
It's really easy if you're breathing very quickly and you're over breathing and you're doing those big giant high volume exhales, big heavy sigh exhales, you can actually start to feel physically dizzy uh, because of over breathing. You're, you're messing up the carbon dioxide levels in your blood. So you're going to relax your body, like take the tension out of your body, and you're going to slow down your breathing, slow it down, and breathe into your belly, not into your chest. You're not filling your chest and lifting your shoulders. You're breathing into your belly. In, hold for a second, exhale, slow. The exhale is longer than the inhale. When the exhale is longer than the inhale, by, by a second or two, it doesn't have to be anything major, and you're slowing your breathing, you're not going to overbreathe. So a lot of people that react in fear to that sensation of being dizzy and unsteady, they start to overbreathe and they make it worse. So you're going to relax your body and you're going to focus on your breathing. And I'm going to tell you if dizzy or unsteadiness is a recurring symptom for you and it's your biggest issue that you're trying to overcome, you're really going and, and you're really going to want to practice some diaphragmatic breathing so you understand what that breathing is supposed to be. So I, I'll have a really good tutorial. I'll link it in the show notes. So if you go to theanxioustruth.com slash 93, and theanxioustruth.com slash 93 will be the show notes for this episode. I'll link a really good video. It's super easy. It's simple. It's short. I believe it's from the University of Michigan that teaches diaphragmatic breathing. Go check that out, and you want to practice that. So you're going to relax your body. You're going to regulate your breathing the proper way and slow everything down, and then you're going to put your brain in neutral. And like the breathing plays into that because you can start to focus on your breath instead of the sensations. So instead of being focused entirely on what that physically feels like and what the thoughts are associated with that, you put your focus on your breath or something else. Your breath is just an easy target because it's there and with you, but you're going to want to focus away from the sensations and the thoughts and the fear. And that's just the way it's going to have to be. So you relax, you breathe, you refocus, you keep doing what it is that you are doing. There's no reason to stop. You can slow down, but you're not going to hang on to the shopping cart. You're not going to hang on to hot death like the person you're with. You're not going to hang on to the wall. You're not going to immediately run. I've heard some people who say they must go to ground. So some people, when they experience this, they will literally, literally intentionally put themselves on the ground. No more going to ground. So if that's you, you're not going to do that anymore. No more putting yourself on the ground. You do not need to go to ground for safety here. You don't need to go sit down. You don't need to go to lay down. You can slow down. You don't have to be rushing through your stuff because that makes it worse. But you can continue to function even though you feel unsteady and uncomfortable in that unsteadiness. And you will be afraid of it initially. You will be terrified to do that. But the more you do it, the more you will learn like, oh, this is that uncomfortable thing, but I don't have to be afraid of it. And when you stop being afraid of it, suddenly the symptom does begin to slowly go over time. But just be aware, be aware that that dizzy, giddy, unsteady feeling, however way you want to describe it now, is one of the most common anxiety and stress responses report, reported by every human being around the world. Like stomach stuff and the dizzy, lightheaded thing. I mean, everybody knows about the racing heart and the heavy breathing and all that stuff, but in terms of a stress response, not a panic response, a response to stress or emotional stress, uh, many, many people go directly to the dizzy thing, the dizzy, unsteady thing. We, that's why the room was spinning is something that people talk about all the time. They told me I won the lottery. Suddenly, I, the room was spinning. Or I, I just, my boss came in and told me I was fired and like, oh my God, I had to sit down. The room was spinning. You actually hear people use those phrases in everyday life. These are people who do not have anxiety disorders. So remember that, it is possible that you will experience that symptom sometime because that's just what human bodies appear to do in reaction to like stress or sudden stress, especially surprise. So it, it can happen. So your goal here is to just learn to not be afraid when it happens. Like, oh yeah, it's that thing again. I could just keep going. I hate it, but I can keep going. That's what you want to get. And you know, if this is something that sticks with you all day long, and trust me, I have lived those days where it's all day long, but I still live them. I don't retreat from them, but I understand that. So if you're living in a state where like whenever you try to do anything, you are in that state all day long, which you're really not. When you get distracted, you, you're not in that state. But if it feels like it's with you every waking moment, if you're upright, you are dizzy all day long, then 
the more you do what I'm talking about here, the more that will lessen. You will not feel like it's with you all day long. It will go away over time. It will lessen over time. And then it will hit you maybe, maybe, at other times in your life after that, when you're hit with like bad news or great news or you're excited or you're really angry. Like that's, that's just being normal. But you'll learn that like you're just being a normal human being. You don't have to be afraid of that. So that's Dizzy in a nutshell. There's not a whole lot I could say about it. We'll talk specifically about driving a little bit. Let's talk about driving and the dizzy feeling or the unsteady feeling. That I know is a big deal for a lot of people also. So a lot of people feel like, well, if I have this dizzy feeling or this unsteady feeling, there's no, it's not safe to drive a car. I can't drive a car. But I can tell you from experience that I can, I can have that sensation to drive a car. Many, many people do. Like you are, your reaction to it is, is making it appear way worse than it really is. And when you can change your reaction to it and learn not to be afraid of it, you will see you are more than capable of driving your car. But even if you are driving the car and you feel like suddenly, yeah, this is so great, you can always pull over for a few minutes. You can always pull over. But you just, you got to get out of the mindset that says, there's no way in the world I should be driving a car. This is unsafe. I'm going to kill myself or someone else. That's not true. It's just not true. And what I would say is this. If this is a sensation that you, you struggle with all the time, whether you're driving or not, and it's got to the point where if you're awake, you're feeling this, and therefore you won't drive or you're terrified to drive because you think there's no way I could barely walk. How can I drive? Then you're going to have to work on it with the walking first. That's okay. It's really okay to do that. So like really start to make a plan to go into those situations on your, on your feet before you get in the car. Walk down the hall, turn around and walk back. Turn around and walk back. Turn around and walk back. Turn your head. Look up, look down. Look to the left, look to the right. Do all those things that you know are going to like kind of magnify that sensation, but do it in the, in the way that I was just telling you to do it. No tension, slow your breathing, belly breathing, focus away from the sensations and the thoughts and just let it be there. So you got to intentionally, like whatever you think the worst case outcome of that dizzy feeling is for you, whatever it is, maybe it's falling down or passing out, go ahead and let it happen because it won't. And if you're really like terrified and you're not driving at all because of this particular sensation, you can work on that outside of the car first, like start to desensitize to it. Then you could start going for short drives and desensitize to it in the car. But trust me, you are able to drive that way. You can, I promise. I promise you can. I mean, if you're already driving and you're just a little bit nervous when it happens, you can continue to drive and work on your reaction. But if you just do not ever get in the car behind the wheel because of this, well, then you're going to have to desensitize before, before you get in the car. Like, so work on it outside of the car first and you can start driving. That's the way to do that. So, I mean, I don't really have a whole lot more to say about dizzy. Cause like I said, in the beginning, we're really approaching it exactly the same symptom, exactly the same way as every other symptom, the driving adds a wrinkle. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit and, and the specific, um, the specific, the specific response of some people that go to ground thing is something that I hear more often than I ever thought I would. Like my natural reaction is to go to ground. And it's funny to hear people almost universally, if that's the reaction that they have, they almost universally describe it as that. I must go to ground. I don't know if that's something that somebody teaches them or what, but that's, a, that's something you got to get rid of. So those are the two specific things about dizziness that I wanted to cover. But otherwise, I don't really have much else to talk about. It's kind of it. So I'll wrap it up here. We're going to be less than 20 minutes. It's one of the, definitely one of the shorter episodes. Hopefully it has been helpful to you. If you have been waiting to hear about this topic, then, you know, I'm glad I was able to do it. Hopefully it's been useful to you. I'm going to ask a favor. If you're listening on iTunes, then rate and review if you could. Five stars would be awesome. And, um, you know, questions, comments, whatever it happens to be, always welcome. Any way you could find me. You can always start at theanxioustruth.com slash links. It's always the place to start. That's my website. And it'll get you to all my social media. Join the Facebook group. You're going to want to be in it. It's a great, great, great group of people. And that's it. I'm going to end it now. And uh, I'll send you out this music, by the way. People ask. This is Afterglow by my friend Ben Drake. Ben Drake Music. Facebook.com slash Ben Drake Music. Afterglow is an awesome song. And uh, Ben was nice enough to let me use it. So that's what you hear at the beginning and end of every episode. All right, folks. That's 93. See you next week for 94. Have a good one. It's in the afterglow It's in the lyrics of the songs we know 
It's in these feelings that you never show Yeah, you're doing fine It's all around you, you can breathe it in And this is where your story begins You got the feeling that you're gonna win Yeah, you're doing fine Now in the city and you're living fast No looking back or dwelling on the past You know you'll never get another chance So go and live your life Yeah, yeah, yeah Push through the pressure like an atom bomb You keep on dancing like it's your last song Makes no difference if you're right or wrong Now you're on your way Hey, what's up, guys? Drew here. In the five years that I've done the podcast, I've never had a sponsor. But now it's time for me to put in a little plug for the day job, the business that I own. And that business is managed WordPress hosting. So if you have a website and it runs WordPress and you'd like WordPress hosting that makes WordPress faster, more secure, and way easier than you ever imagined it would be, then check out Helix. You can find us online at imhelix.com. That's I-A-M-H-E-L-I-X.com. We took a long time to build Helix. I'm super proud of it. It works spectacularly. We take really good care of our customers, and I promise we would take really good care of you too. So if you're in the market for WordPress hosting that will blow your mind, check out Helix. I would appreciate the consideration. I thank you for coming by and listening, and I'll see you the next time.